Okay, so today we're going to talk about bivariate data analysis. This is an example. Bivariate, two variables, BMI, body mass index, and systolic blood pressure. They are two variables. Normally, people say heavier you are, BMI higher. When BMI goes up, BP also goes up. Expenditure and saving. The more you spend, less you save. Temperature in New York, rainfall in KL, most of the time they are not connected. So this can be positively associated with two variables. Higher the BMI, higher the BP. This can be negatively, the more you spend, less you save. This may not be any association. So that's the purpose of this bivariate data analysis. Right. So two variables. Normally we plot them x-axis and y-axis. So scatter plot, scatter plot, you want to see the pattern between the two variables. Right? So now we have the pattern can be like one, number one. How to describe this? The higher the value on X, the higher value on Y. So you say positive. Positive. Right. This will be negative. higher the value on X, <coughs> the lower the value on Y. So negative pattern. This positive. This one, like all over the place, is random. So this is like BMI and BP. This like expenditure and mm -hmm. saving. So this is like temperature in KL, rainfall in New York. It may not be associated. So first step is describe your data using scatter plot. So what you're talking about, bivariate data analysis. You want to know how the pattern, how are the two variables associated. So visually, we normally we look at the scatter plot first. So what's the difference here? In both plots, high, higher the value of X, higher the value of Y in both plots. But here, these plots are very much compact, <coughs> very much linear compared to this. Same pattern, same pattern, but the dots are very much away. These plots are very close. So both are positive. We may want to differentiate number one to number two. Number one may be strong, number two, not so strong. For that, we look into correlation. Correlation is a measure of strength between two variables. The value ranges from minus one to plus one. Plus one means perfect association, increase like that. Negative means perfect reduction. Center here means there's no connection. So we're not interested in the extremes. You're only interested in the negative, positive, or no association. Right. Generally, <clears throat> the values range from zero to, uh, as you said, minus one to plus one. Any values between 0.3 negative, 0.3 positive, these values are considered to be small based on Cohen's criteria. So generally what you're looking for is the green bars. If the value is stronger towards one, it's a strong positive. Towards minus one, it's a strong negative. The value somewhere here, you may say weak. The values inside here will say there's no association. Right, so that's a general rule of thumb. Minus one to plus one. Close to zero means no association more towards one, strong positive, more towards minus one, strong negative, All right? So first, <clears throat> scatter to see the pattern. Pattern can be number one, number two, or number three. These two patterns are similar. What the difference? This much closer dots compared to this. Therefore, there's a difference in the strength. How do you measure it? Using correlation. So values, close to zero within plus or minus one considered to be small, right? 
So just now I said, what's the difference between number one and number two? Look at the correlation here, 0 0.976, almost one, very strong. This 0 0.659, not as strong as this. Both are positive, both will show positive pattern, but this is much stronger. That's where the correlation comes in, right? Regression. So we're going to look at three things, scatter, correlate, regress. Scatter, scatter, see the pattern, things like this. Both the positive pattern, what's the difference? We check the correlation. So this pattern correlation is very close to one, it's a bit weak. Then we feel that there is a cause and effect, one causes the other, then go to regression. What do you do? So these are the dots from the scatter plot. We fit a line, straight line, right? So don't worry, we're not going to manually, all click button. We'll give this equation, y equals to a plus bx. So what's a is where the graph cuts the y-axis. What's b? b is a slope, change in x, change in y, right? So what is the change in y as x changes? So that's a slope, right? So basically, regression tests whether the slope is it zero or not zero. Imagine the slope is zero, then the line will go like that, slope is zero. Then you say there's no association. In this case, as x increases here, y increases too. That means there is an association. So basically, in this equation, we are going to test whether B is zero or not zero. B is zero means line is flat. Then say Y does not depend on X. The B is not zero, either going up or coming down. So how do you know B is zero or not? We refer to P value, right? Okay, residuals. So what is residuals? We can see the dots are not perfectly sitting on the line. There are some deviation from the line. So this point is called predicted, this observed. So residual is a difference between observed, the red dot, and predicted, what's supposed to be early and why. So smaller the residuals, better the bottle fit. Bigger the residual, supposing the residual sitting here, big distance. That means not so good. So what's the best line? The line that minimizes the residuals. Some are above, some are below. So this will be positive value. This will be negative value. All the observation above the line, positive. This will be negative. So how good the model is, in certain extent, depends on the residual. Right, so residuals are very important, important when it comes to regression. So residuals can be positive or negative, positive or negative. We take the sum of the positive and negative answer will be zero. This positive, negative will cancel out, will be zero. So what do you do? So you square the residual first. Supposing this is plus three, squared. Supposing minus two, squared, and then add them up. Hence the name ordinary least square, OLS. So ordinary least square of the residuals. What's the best line? The line that minimizes the residual square. Okay, this is a very important term in regression, must be tested. The assumption is that these residuals must be independent, that right? they're not connected to each other, independent, and must be normally distributed. That's the assumption on the residuals. Right, the independent assumption, what do we do? We do the residual plot, residual versus predicted. We check for this assumption, residuals, are they independent? Later we'll see how to do this in SPSS. So the residuals must be random. 
this is what we want. Residual, eh? not the observed value. Residuals must be random. This is not random. This is a violation. Linear. This quadratic, again, violation. This funnel like, see, very broad here, becoming narrower, narrower, narrower. It's like a funnel. So, testing the assumption number one, residuals must be independent. We look at this residual plot. The plot must be like number one. All these are violations. That means the data may have been transformed into a different way of computation. Next, we know what's normality. Right? This refers to assumption number two, normally distributed. So take all the residuals and check whether they conform to normality. So you know what's normal, we already done the second class. So we do the test the normality, we get a p-value. The p-value is more than 0 0.05, the second assumption normality is met. So two assumptions must be tested based on the residuals. Are they independent? Look at this figure. Are they normally distributed? We perform test of normality. Right, so that's the residual. Uh, this ANOVA table, I don't want to go in detail of this, how to obtain everything. In SPSS produces table. We look at this p value. Right, p value. Is it more than or less than 0 0.05? So this p value, how do you know f is big or small? So p value less than equals 0 0.05, y depends on x. That's my objective. Does Y depend on X? Does SBP depend on BMI? We refer to this table. We look at the p-value. The p-value more than 0 0.05, then Y does not depend on X. You can imagine the graph is flat. The P less than equals, equals to 0 0.05, then it's a Y depend on X. You can imagine the graph going this way. So basically, you want to know that is flat or it's a gradient. Flat means y does not depend on x. It's a gradient. Then you say yes, y depends on x. So all depends on the p value. R square. R square, also known as explain total explained variation. Right? The value ranges from 0 to 1 or 0 to 100. Take the R and square it, 0 to 1 or 0 to 100. Higher the value, more variance explained. So what's explained and unexplained variation? Let's talk about unexplained variation. The distance, the distance from all these square is called unexplained. The distance of the residuals, eh? square it, that's called unexplained variation. Right. Example. This is the data I have, BP and BMI. First step, scatter. So now what do you see the pattern here? Higher the BMI, higher the BP. So there's a positive pattern here. Next, video equation. The Peter line. Peter line. So that's the equation given by SPSS. This equation, this line is not flat. It is a positive gradient. It means the higher BMI, higher is the BP. So how to interpret this now? Once this equation comes in, that's a value, right? Some way it cuts the x-axis, y-axis. What's important is this, 8.11. Forget about this, only this BMI. How do you say now? That's a slope. Every one unit increase in BMI, BMI increases from here to here. The SBP increases by eight units. So that is what we want to find out. First, the graph, is it flat? Flat means BP does not depend on BMI. It's not flat, there's a gradient. That means yes, BP depend on BMI. Next question, how 
we take this coefficient, every unit increase in BMI, BP expected to increase by eight units. Right. So we look at the, I don't want to go into details of this. Finally, it come to an hour table, okay, residuals. The BP, SBP, these are predicted values, the blue line, blue dots are the observed values. Blue dots are the observed values. The, line, the values on the line are the predicted. So difference between this and this, that is your residuals. Some are above, some are below. Right, so residuals, finally, we put into one table. Basically, I want to know whether BP depends on BMI. So look at the last table. So this P value is less than 0 0.05. Have a conclusion? Yes, BP depends on BMI. The P value in our table is less than 0 0.001. Hence, BP depends on BMI. Next question is how that's the equation. Interpret every unit increase in BMI, BP expected increase by 811 units. R square. Take this regression value, divide by the total. That's the R square. So what does it mean? 93.6% of the variation in BP is explained by BMI. So what does it mean here? The BP of the individuals vary. BP of the individual vary. Differ from person to person. Why is it so? Is it because of the differences in BMI? Right. You can see the BP values differ from one another. Is it due to differences in BMI? You can see this guy 118, 23.9, 142. 27.2. So it looks like there's a connection between these two. Now you want to know how much? That's the R square. How much variation in this can be explained by differences in BMI? Higher the value, better is a prediction. In my case now, I got an equation, interpretation. Uh, professor, professor. Uh, Professor, yep. Uh, can I have a question? Sure. Uh, just know the number, uh, uh, number the negative 76 point uh, ah, okay. seven. What, what does this number mean? Right. Now, uh, where, where does this axis start? 23, right? Ah. Uh, but BMI somehow got this side, isn't it? Right? This uh, uh, one zero, right? Uh, uh, uh. When this value is zero, zero, mm. this graph will come somewhere there, right? Mm. So don't interpret this. Don't interpret the only this. If I continue, BMI zero. Is it possible BMI zero? Mm. Is it possible no. BMI to zero? No. 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 So rational is. If the BMI is zero, what will be the BP? BMI is never zero. So don't have to discuss this. Only for prediction purposes. Prediction purposes. Supposing BMI, person's BMI, let's say, is 25. So what is the BP? 25 times 8. How much 25 times 8? 25 times, 25 times 8. Take the first figure. 8. How much 25 times 8? 200. 200 minus, minus, let's say 76. Minus. How much 200 minus 76? 124. Ah, somewhere here. Um, right? That's only for prediction. But don't interpret it. What does it mean? So how can we get the number? Later I'll show. Right? Basically, what it means is 
when BMI is zero, what is the BP? BMI cannot be zero. Is that right? BMI cannot be zero. This only helps in calculation. Can BMI equals 25, put inside here, roughly about 200 minus this, then becomes about 129 something. How to get this value all calculated automatically from the SPSS software? You interpret only. Han, are you okay? Han? Okay. Mm. You don't have to interpret this because when BMI is zero, BMI is never zero. Mm. When the BMI here is zero, zero times eight is zero, minus 76. So the graph will be meeting somewhere here, but it's no meaning. So write the equation for prediction purposes. 25 times 8, 200, then minus this, then the predicted value. Right? Are you okay? Han? Okay. Right. Okay. 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 So finally, look at the p value and decide. That's an example. Data set one, right between partial table, uh, the same data, but 108 cases. The two variables, BMI, SBP. What do I want to know? And what I want to know? I have two variables. What do you want to know? Fun, fun. Professor? Yeah. Han, I'm giving BMI and BP. What do you want to know? Body mass. Uh, yeah. Uh, I want to know if uh, the BMI and the SPP has a co correlation uh, about the uh, association. So what if it's a regre regression. Is it true? BMI, mm. big BMI means what? BMI, very big value means what? BMI is, uh, is X. Means what? High BMI means what? That's obesity. Obese. Uh, obesity. Obese. The person's obese is a BP also high, isn't it? How to get BMI? Height, weight, weight divided by height squared. That's BMI. Mm. If weight's very high, BMI will be very high. Does it mean pressure was very high? Correct? Does it mean that high BMI yes. means high BP? That's all you want to know. If that's the case, high BMI, high BP. High BP, is it okay? No. High BP, blood pressure, is it okay? No. No. Supposing these two are connected, how to bring down a BP? Lose weight. Down the BMI, right? <laughs> Blood pressure. Now, you want to reduce the blood pressure? Yeah. You reduce the BMI, right? Mm. Uh, that's the purpose of doing this. Okay, let's see the scatter plot. Later, we're going to do this. You follow the dialogue. Put BP, put BMI, and click OK. That's all. See this graph now. So what is in this graph? BMI. Higher the BMI, higher the BP, right? Mm. Is there a pattern? Yes. Right. Heavy people, heavier people, looks like high BP. Lighter people, looks like low BP. Mm. So from this graph, we can see that there is a pattern. How does it work? The heavier the person, the higher the BP. This is to see visually, visually. This strong or weak? That's a correlation, correlation. Mm. Follow this procedure, BP and BMI. Mm. Ah, that's the R value. Is it more than 0 
Yes. Yes. Is it significant? Yeah. The P is less than 0 0.05. Yes. 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 It's strong. Okay. The R value is 0. Points. Uh, these two are mirror image, okay? See, either one is enough. The R value is 0. 0.669. P is less than 0. 0.05. Therefore, there is a positive association between BMI and BP. The higher the BMI value, the higher the BP value because the value is positive. If this is negative, that is say the higher the BMI, lower the BP. So from the graph, from the graph and from the correlation value, we can more or less say that there is a connection. But the question is, does BP depend on BMI? We cannot say whether BP depends on BMI. We stop here. So biologically, biologically, let's say we can prove that BMI, the weight increases, BP increases. Then we proceed with regression. Again, BP, BMI. Just click OK. Click OK. So this table, selected tables. There are more tables, I just selected some tables. Follow the sequence. Follow the sequence. One, two, three, and four. Follow the sequence. Linda. Linda? Yeah. What's the objective? What do you want to know? What do we want to know? Uh, yeah. Yeah, do they have the correlation? Correlation? Association? Yeah, BMI association. Yeah. Right? BMI and BP. Is it true that heavy people, high BP, correct? Yeah. Right. So this analysis, we just follow the sequences. So objective is, does BP, BP depend on BMI? So look at the p-value. Is it less than 0 0.05? Is it yes. less? Yes. Yeah. Therefore, hence, BP depends on BMI. So look at the NOVA table. P-value less than 0 0.05. We conclude, yes, BP depends on BMI. What's the next question? I say BP depends on BMI. What's the next question? Next question. How much? How? 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 You say depends. Next question. How? Come to this coefficient table. So we'll go down to this coefficient. Does it depend on BMI? Yes. Next question. How? So write the equation. Right? BP equals to 71.028 plus 2.03 times BMI. So this is a constant. That's your A. We don't interpret it. Coefficient for BMI, this value. X, interpret it. Every unit increase in BMI SBP expected to increase by two units. So I did not interpret this value. Every unit increase in BMI, BP expected to increase by two units. Right, again, number one, our objective is, does BP depend on BMI? P value less than 0 0.05? Yes. Next question is, how? Write the equation and interpret the 2.03. Lastly, number four, R square. R square, right? You did mention just now, R square it, take the R, 0 0.669, square it. Just now, R was 0 0.669 and square it. So how to interpret this? R square 0 0.448, which means, 44.8% of the variation BP 
is explained by BMI, meaning why the BP varies from person to person. Is it because of differences in BMI? Yes. How many percent? Only about 45 percent. BP varies person to person to person. Only 45 percent is due to a difference in BMI. The balance 55 percent, some other variables. Right? So let's go through one more time. This is my objective. I use the word connection, okay? You see connection. Is there a connection between BMI and BP? So this BMI, you can see various are different from each other. BP also different. We plot it. We see, oh, there is a pattern. There is a pattern. Is this strong or weak? We do a correlation. 0 0.669, yes, yeah, towards one. And the p value is significant. And the value in absolute value more than 0 0.3. Next question is Can you prove that BP depends on the BMI? Supposing biologically some reason BMI or the weight increases BP. Then you go into regression. In regression, there are many tables. I selected three tables. First, we have our table to answer that objective. P less than 0 0.05, we say yes. Next question, how? Look at the coefficients table. So write the equation. And interpret the coefficient 2.03. Next question, how much? Is it like 100%? No, but 45% of the variation in BP is explained by BMI. Questions? Question. All right. Next, testing assumptions. Assumptions on the residuals. Right? So go back to regression again. Do this. I'm going to select plots and save. And the plots. And the plots do exactly the same like this. Z residual, residual y-axis, Z predicted, predicted in the x-axis. Right? And then continue. So go back here. Click save. Save the residuals. So what's the residual? The distance between observed and predicted values. Then let's see the results comes out. This is a plot, right? Residual plot. You can see the dots are at random. It's not that going up, right? There's no pattern. This very important random. You can see all the values are within plus or minus three. It's also important plus or minus three because standard normal curve is between plus or minus three. Next. Test for normality. Normality of the residuals we done many times. Residual. Click plots. Normality. Continue and click OK. Ah, that's a p-value. Sample size more than five zero. So use comma graph similar. So p-value is more than zero point zero five. Assumption of normality of the residuals match. Right. So the last part is very important, testing the assumption. There are many assumptions. These are main important ones on the residuals. So what's residual? How much the, the, the observed value differ from the line or predicted? If we do this, look at the graph, render. First assumption is match. Second. You did save the residuals, run the test of normality. All right, normal assumptions match. So now your model is valid. Questions? Yeah. Questions? The second example is H and BMI. This is how things go. Look at the plot. Is there a pattern? Is there a pattern? No. No. Looks like there's no connection between H and BMI. 
One more step. Correlation. Is correlation significant? No. No. More it's than. Values less, less than 0.3 in magnitude. It's more than 0 0.5, 0 0.05. So looks like there's no association between age and BMI. Must I do regression? No need. Even if I do, look at the p-value, more than 0 0.05. And our table, e less than more than 0 0.05, BMI does not depend on age. Right? That's a basics for regression analysis. Right? Then of course, you'll do your exercise. Okay, let's open your data file and let's do example one. Open a data file, data set one. Okay, data set one. Okay, follow the instruction. Follow the instruction. Let's see a scatter plot first. All right, scatter plot. Graphs, the graphs there. Legacy dialog. And then scatter dot. Scatter dot. Simple. Define. I'm just using this, okay? Simple define. So two axes now. Y axis. Y axis. SBP. X axis BMI. Right? BP and BMI. That's all. Click OK. We okay, compile the values, the, the graph. Higher the side goes. Higher the BMI, higher the BP. So that is a pattern. So next question is, is it strong or weak? Strong or weak? Next we do, correlation. So analyze, correlate, bivariate. Analyze, correlate, bivariate. So which two variables? Variables are BMI and SVP. The order is not important. BMI and SVP. Click OK. So that's the table. The P value, the R value, correlation value, 0 0.669. And the P value is significant. There is significant association. Next step, if there's a reason to believe there's a cause and effect, BMI causes BP to go up, go to regression. In regression, analyze regression linear. Right. Okay, you must make sure you know the right variable, dependent variable. BP depends on BMI, not other way around. So BP, dependent, independent is BMI. Okay, dependent and independent. The all time being, just click OK.
Đấy, click OK. The three tables, one, two, and three. It's very sad. Start from here and our table. So the sequence, one. So one, the p value is less than 0 0.05. Therefore, EP depends on BMI. Next question is, how? So you go to coefficients table and write the equation. And explain the coefficient for BMI. Every unit increase in BMI, BP expected increase by two units. Lastly, how much? R square is 44.8%. So interpret 44.8% of the variation in BP explained by BMI. The balance 45% come out of the reverse, which is not in the model. Okay. Hi, Han, can you hear me? <coughs> Han, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, sir. I All can right. hear you. Okay, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, uh, just now your uh, calculates uh, uh, data about the uh, regression. Ah. And uh, then you uh, test uh, the assumption. Uh, I want to know uh, when you test the assumption, okay. if you use the uh, same, num uh, same data. Hold on, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Ah. Mm. Okay, after this, we're going to test the assumption. Mm. Right, how to do this? Okay. Uh, the second, second question. Ah. Uh, we calculate uh, uh, the, the data number at the, we can do the uh, re regression, ah. but uh, in the end, can we uh, get the formula or, uh, uh, or equation, a formula? Okay, formula. Uh, can well, we get the formula? But in this class, I don't want to use formula, right? Oh. Because this oh. great number of from social sciences, we decided oh. no formula. How to use the software just to write whatever a conclusion. That's the focus of this class, not to teach you all the formula. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah, mm. users, users of statistics, right? Mm. Make life easier. Right. Oh, okay. Now, testing assumption. What assumption? Go ahead, linear regression, solve there. Now click plots, plots, and do exactly what's in your notes. Y axis, 
z residue x axis z predicted exactly don't change anything continue next click save right so continue you click save button save this residual right this is a predicted this residual continue that's all click ok now look at this graph right the dots are at random and are within plus three and minus three so the assumption of independent independence of the restores met next normality of the restores are the restores normally distributed it is safe it is safe the restores look at the last column uh, that's the restores so test whether it's normally distributed. They given the notes. We've done this many times. Analyze, descriptive, explore. Variable is the last variable you created. Residual one. Take the last variable. Plots. Okay, plots, normality plots with test. Continue and click OK. Okay, look at the table. Sample size large. So I use common gross mean of. That p value is 0 0.079, which is more than 0 0.05. Therefore, the residuals are distributed normal questions so we conclude the equation that's the equation what happens bmi increase bp increase how much only about 45 percent the balance 45 percent due to some other variables which is not in our model so bigger the r square better it is questions okay second example right example two age and bmi let's try the scatter Graph, legacy, scatter, define, reset, reset, age in the horizontal axis, x axis, age, BMI in the y axis. You're asking, is it true? Older people are obese. Okay. Look at the pattern. It's random. Looks like BMI is not connected to H. Let's try the regression. Uh, sorry, correlation. Correlation. So take our BMI SPP, plug in H. Right? H and BMI. The value is so small, and the p value is more than 0 0.05. So there's no connection, no association. You can stop here. But supposing I want to continue with the regression, let's see what happens. Regression, linear, if our BP, BMI goes up here, depends BMI. 
independent is H. Click OK. And our table, P value less than more than 0 0.05. Therefore, BMI dependent, right? BMI does not depend on H. So that's the equation. Of course, the equation will be there. But the slope is not significant. Look at R square. Only 2.9%, only 2.9%, very, very small. So H does not explain BMI. It's not necessarily good assumption. You can see assumption also quite distributed randomly, the residuals. I want to test normality of the residuals, which is not necessary. Let's just want to test it. That's well two, the last one. Right? Plus it was not normally distributed. It doesn't matter. The model stops here and say it does not matter. You don't have to go and test the rest of us. Questions? Questions? Okay, let's see how to record this. Let me stop recording.